Hello, my name is Robert Morrell, and today with Reawakening, I'm going to talk about another subject. It's one of my favorite subjects in the Bible. I just love the Bible back and forth. I love reading it. It's amazing. The Bible is my favorite book, and the, one of the subjects that's fun here is Jesus being the life. He's the life. A lot of people, you know, there are people who are alive, but they have life. It's like you go to an old folks home, you know, a lot of people, you know, they're dying, they're going down. But the people who are Christians, they're alive in there because they know Jesus and they have a blessed hope. So talk about Jesus being the life today. So just, it doesn't matter what I look like, what I sound like, I want you to hear from Jesus today. I don't care what I look like. Am I your typical pastor? No. I have a degree in mathematics. But God's used me to go out and minister to the lost. With unapologetically. So, I don't want any qualifications. I want Jesus. I want to ride on Jesus' back. I don't want qualifications from the world. So, I'm going to go through some scripture about Jesus being the life today. John 14. Let your heart not be troubled... I'm sorry, let not your heart be troubled, but you believe in God, believe in, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also and where i go you know and the way you know tom said to him lord we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way and jesus said to him i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me so this is jesus talking to thomas and I'm going to go through John 20 as well. The scripture is the most important thing here. What I say is little important, but it's the scriptures at the end of the day. Because my words will fade away. The only thing my words mean is Jesus' word backs them. That's the meaning. doesn't matter if I have a suit and a tie or if I look good, my voice sounds good. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to remember it in 50 years. But many people who are watching it, watching this video in 50 or 60 years, won't be alive and will have to face Jesus. So, so John 20, after the resurrection, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to him, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven then. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So now I'm going to cut apart this scripture. So these two scriptures here. In, back in John 14, In my Father's house there's many man mansions. So, when we get married, now connecting this to last week, or last few weeks, the topic, when we get to see Jesus, our blessed hope is he's preparing a mansion for us. We're not going to float in the sky, okay? The hope is we're going to be, we're going to be in a mansion, we're, we're given a kingdom. And, you know, it's just amazing, because Jesus has his own mansion, up in heaven. I mean, he sits right next to, on the right seat to the Lord, on, the, on his right hand. So, now, down here, when it says, 
Jesus said to him, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus has to be the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody has to come through the Father except through him. So they all have to be, those four things have to be mutually true at the same time. To be the way, you have to be the truth. If that makes sense. To be, if you you see like a sign over there, like a one-way sign, well, they're telling you that's one way, and it has to be true. And what good is truth if there's no life? What's the point of the way? You can follow many different ways, but to be the way, the truth, but when you get life out of it, when you get a fresh new heart, when God gives you a new heart and he gives you life, he breathes life. I had cancer. I was bleeding to death on there. I had a, what's it called? My blood count is supposed to be 16. I was at a four. I was running on a quarter. And you know what? I still love Jesus. And I was still preaching to Jesus. Even the day after surgery, I'm sitting here, Lord Jesus, send me people. Let me preach to them. I don't care if I'm laying on the back and I can't stand. You think you're going to sit there and minister to the lost? Without Jesus, just because you can walk and you have a nice little paper plate of a degree? You think that's how it's created? No. I'll show you how it's created. Like, and going to John 20, when he breathes on them, when he breathes, he breathes life. He breathes the Holy Spirit on them. Like Jesus Christ, he breathes life in them. You could be blind, you could be deaf, you could be very simple. Just because, you know what? You don't have to have any education to sit there and share Jesus. And when it is, when you get this, you get new life. You get up and walk. You know, look at this. If, if a degree was that important, why are schools lifeless? Why are generally school teachers are generally lifeless? I look at them. I don't feel like I'm getting a real person half the time. I mean, shoot, when I graduated, then I talked to a former teacher. They're totally a different person. You know, the warm, fun, bubbly person that was there never existed. Because he didn't know Jesus. And the poor man, I just hope he gives himself over to Christ. You know, and what generally happens is, is you know, like I have two little babies, okay? One's two months old and the other one's 20 months old. What do we do? You know, like... Me and the 20 month old, I sit there, I play the Midnight Express theme. It's a wrestling theme from back in the day. This wrestling theme, I just sit there and I dance with her. And she dances with me. She jumps up and down, bubbly. Sin hasn't taken her. She's full of life. Because right now, she hasn't been corrupted with sin. Someday she's going to need Jesus. But right now, she knows Jesus better than most people do. She knows Jesus better than most people do. But if she doesn't get to a, a deep relationship with Jesus, the day that she sins, she'll be turned into a drill bit and thrown into a, a fire. That's called hell. But on the way down, people are just turned into a drill bit and they get stranger and stranger. And they just, they because their hope is lost. And, you know, I'm doing this not to judge you. I don't judge anybody. I'll tell you for firsthand, I deserve to be in hell. I deserve to be in hell, but Jesus Christ ransomed me from my sins. He saved me from my sins, and I implore you, it's Jesus saved me from my sins. I want to follow you. You know, I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to deny myself and take up my cross daily and follow me. Because every day, it's going to be hard. This life will be hard. But Jesus promises he is the life and he loves you. Guys, peace.
Peace out. I love you. <laughs>